Now, this is the top of the world in the winter. Um, as you can see, it's covered with ice. We've all heard about global warming, but what are the facts, and why should we believe them? Ask Dan Grossman. He knows the facts, and he presents them with authority, enthusiasm, and humor. The thing is, we actually know a lot about the climate and how it works. We know an awful lot. We know what causes ice ages. We know that we should be actually heading to an ice age right now. The last, last ice age was about 12,000 years ago. And um, there's an ice age about every 100,000 years for the last million years. Every 100,000 years, there's an ice age. And it, it lasts you know, about 80,000 years. Most of the time, actually, the Earth is in ice ages um, during the last million years. And um, so we should be heading toward that now. But we're not. The temperature's going up. It should be going down. In 10 years of reporting about global warming, Dan's traveled to all seven continents and close to each of Earth's poles. So Dan, why don't you tell us your GPS coordinates and where you are? I'm just off the coast of Svalbard in the Barents Sea at 79 degrees north, 15 degrees east, and about 800 miles south of the North Pole. Freelance journalist Dan Grossman is in Greenland now. He recently visited the fast-moving Haven Glacier there. We caught up with him yesterday via satellite phone and started by asking him where he was. I'm actually on the ice sheet. I'm, I'm at a research camp on the ice sheet. Many people aren't aware of what's happening to the world. Global warming is melting ice everywhere on Earth. But mostly it's in faraway places where few people ever go. Dan brings these places into focus. He brings back stories from the places where global warming is already causing noticeable impacts. He's interviewed researchers who are studying these changes, and he understands the science and knows how to explain it. I was on a trip last summer to, uh, to Australia with a, a scientist from Boston University who's interested in studying the, uh, the, the mid-Pliocene, which is a period four and a half million years ago. And uh, she's trying to, fit, to determine what, uh, what the level of the sea was during the Pliocene, because the Pliocene is the last time that we had carbon dioxide levels as high as we're, we're aiming for right now. And so it might shed some light on what we could expect. Thank you for delivering an eye-opening presentation to our students. Their feedback has been outstanding. And imagine it's like a big bowl of ice cream, and uh, the, the bowl's a little bit chipped on the edges. And the places where it's chipped is where the ice cream is flowing out. Those are called outlet glaciers. And, um, and so uh, Alulasat Ice Fjord is right where one of those breaks in the, in the rim uh, uh, is, and uh, you've got ice flowing out um, uh, into the ocean there. And this one happens to be the fastest, one of the fastest uh, moving glaciers uh, in the world. So that's why I wanted to, to go there. He gave a captivating presentation. His talk provoked a lively exchange of questions. They brought up a wood stove. So one night they said, okay, well, we're going to fire up the sauna. Who wants to go? And I, I wasn't so sure because uh, I was kind of tired and it was really late. And then um, I went through the, the, the corridor there and it smelled kind of funny, but I, I figured it was just the wet plywood warming up. Then I came back about 10 minutes later and there were like these three naked men and they were standing around and they were, they were staring at, at something, uh, trying to figure out what to do. And there was this, in the middle of the floor there, there was this, um, you know, they just had their sandals on, that's all they were wearing, was this black bubbling thing and someone had put a, um, a snowmobile battery underneath the, the wood stove. And when they had fired it up, it had melted uh, with its, all its battery acid and, and lead. Dan has a degree in physics and a PhD in political science, both from MIT. He studied climate science for a year at the University of Colorado. He's won reporting awards from the American Association for the Advancement of Science, the National Association of Science Writers, the Society of Environmental Journalists, and the American Institute of Biological Sciences. And what is so remarkable is is that despite this meticulous understanding of very detailed and complex information, he presents it in a way that is accessible and humane 
and understandable to virtually every audience you can imagine. Dan explains the facts of global warming persuasively. He shows listeners what it will mean for them if global warming is not slowed. Slowing global warming will not be easy. You can change light bulbs, drive a more efficient car, insulate your house, but the entire economy needs to be mobilized if we're going to get the kinds of cuts and emissions that are needed. And people aren't going to be willing to do that unless they're convinced of the serious consequences to them and to the people they know if temperatures keep on going up and up. The stories he has uncovered all over the world will directly impact the decisions I make. Lately, I've been reporting on the human impacts of climate change. I want people to know that global warming is not just an abstract concept. That's why I reported on the 2003 heat wave in Europe. It killed 1,200 people in Paris alone. It's why I reported on drought in Southern Africa. And it's why I made the movie Rising Waters. Calcutta, where I live, is a noisy, bustling city crammed with people and buildings. But barely 50 miles seaward at the mouth of the Ganges River, things could hardly be more different. For here lies the vast network of the Sundarbans Islands, home to the Earth's largest remaining unbroken mangrove forest. The massive Royal Bengal tiger prowls the dense tide-washed woodlands of this flat river delta at the edge of the Bay of Bengal. I often speak about the Sundarbans in my talks because it makes clear the reality of what it means for the sea to rise. Some experts say that the sea level is basically causing, is destroying the habitat of the tigers by making the places that have been designated for them to be too brackish for them, too salty for them. And so they're, they're moving. But the problem is that the, the, uh, the, there's no place for them to go. And here's a guy, an early casualty of, uh, of climate change. I met him recuperating at the PG hospital in Calcutta. Believe it or not, that's a hospital. Um, after he was attacked by a tiger uh, while he was harvesting crabs in the Sunderbans in an area um, where you normally wouldn't expect so many tigers. So this tiger picked him up by, uh, in its mouth and carried him off and his friends were with him and uh, they followed after with, uh, with clubs, and the tiger dropped him. He's missing part of his ear. He had a big gash in his throat. Global warming is already causing droughts and floods and heat waves. It's already killing and endangering the lives of many thousands of people. I want to alert young people to the danger that awaits them. They're the ones who really need to know. Dan is a world-class journalist. He's one of the first reporters to truly understand the significance and importance of the global warming story and greenhouse gases. He's also a pioneer in the use of multimedia to tell that story. He knows radio. He's been doing it for something like 30 years. He does print. He does magazines. He does online journalism. He does video. This is a tough story, and Dan Grossman is one of the best at telling it. Dan speaks frequently on the causes and consequences of global warming, including impacts on wildlife, people, and global systems, like rain and ice. Listeners leave his talks better prepared to understand and to cope with and combat the critical changes to Earth's climate. <laughs>